Hi guys, welcome back to another Overthrow Disc Golf video. Thank you so much for tuning in. Today we are revisiting the reach back. Prepare your minds to be blown once again. That's it. <laughs> All right, there has been an extra bit of sauce thrown in the discussion about reach back recently, and I'm gonna address it. So here's a question, reach back, non-reach back. Is this just semantics? Are we just trying to fight just to fight because we wanna be right and for whatever reason? No, I think the answer is no. And the first thing I need to say is every coach that is talking about this is trying to figure out the best way to teach their students. So here we go. Why don't I like the terminology reach back? Because when you say reach back, I think the mental image that you give and people like Danny and other guys that are teaching the reach back, they're clarifying these things, right? So they're showing you what they actually, like what they want you to do. So if you watch it in the whole of the discussion, in the context of what they're showing you, they're teaching you what they want you to do, right? So in context, the issue for me is if someone who watches a video on reach back starts telling their friends, reach back, like just reach straight back, that's an issue out of context. So I just don't want to use it whatsoever because this is what I see happen when guys focus on the reach back. It's like, we're doing this walk up thing and we know that at some point there's a reach back. And so people will literally do this. They will go. And they will punch this disc back. They will get that disc back there. Mission accomplished. It is reached back, right? The issue is, is that I don't want the mental image of someone going like this. This is reaching back. If I'm reaching for something, I've got a little shelf. I've got something here. Let's just do it like this. This disc is up here on this pole. And I'm gonna reach for this disc. If I reach like this, there's no need for my body to use my shoulders or anything other than my arm. That's really the key thing here, is I don't want people punching back. The feeling of the disc staying in place, I'm gonna use this as an example. If your disc is here, it stays in place with your last stride. All right, some people do it earlier than that, but it stays in place with your last stride. So we go here, and I'd mentioned in that video that it's gonna be about the left foot a little bit outside, right? So we're here, and now it stays in place here. This allows the shoulder rotation, and actually the disc is getting back via shoulder rotation. So how does the disc get back? Is it a punch, or is it via rotation? And I think we're all gonna agree that it happens via rotation of the upper body. The issue, if you get laser focused on a reach back is I see guys do this. They go boom and they punch this disc back and their shoulders and their hips and all that are all jacked up because it's independent. Or sometimes they just move the arm back and they're here and so they end up collapsing their pocket. Both of which can happen with a punch back, right? But if you rotate your shoulders back, there's always space for the disc to travel into the pocket because you've maintained this angle and now you've rotated your shoulders back. And it doesn't matter if your arm gets only back this much and it's bent or if it gets back all the way. Because when you allow that lead shoulder to push the disc back, you've created enough space for the disc to travel into and that's the important thing. It's not where you leave the disc back. It's not whether it's wide rail or narrow rail or normal rail or whatever they're called. It's, did you rotate the shoulders back? And is there enough room for the disc to go from wherever it is back here, whether it be over here, acceptable, here, acceptable, eagle, acceptable, as long as it can get directly into the pocket, you put it in the right spot, right? I don't like a destination of leaving the disc back. I want the process of coiling the shoulders. The reason I thought of this idea in the first place or what put this on the map for me was years ago and I'm like on the fence of whether I mention him or not mention him but um, I was talking to Paul Macbeth about this at one point and I know because he told me that he practiced this this very thing and this is when Paul does it he goes 
when he steps, he goes, and this is literally how he told me he practiced, so I'm assuming he's not a liar, and this is how he practiced. He would go here, grab a pole or something in his basement or a tree or whatever you got, and he'd go here, and then he would practice here. And so that's where a lot of his wide rail and all that comes from, because if you grab something over here, if you do a forward pump here, and you're traveling this way with a, with a immovable object, watch where he leaves the disc. He leaves it wide, right? And from there, he does the same thing that everybody else does. It goes from here directly into the pocket, all right? If you're an eagle and you walk up, you walk up this way and your stride is more this way, it ends up behind you. And so then from here, you go directly into the pocket and then you go. It's not where you leave the disc, it's are your shoulders rotating enough to create the space for the disc to travel directly into the pocket from, and then are you actually doing it? Uh, thank you guys so much, I hope this was helpful. Peace out, Girl Scout, go get better, do great things, bye.